before we get to Vanguard. Knowledge ball. Yeah. United Front. Tell it. What you want, what you want, what you want. To the Knowledge Radio. We in here. What Yo. you got? Dot. Work hard as a slave to one day be your savior. The wave Ooh. unwavering. This is a labor of love, rise with a purpose every day, invigorated. If we were on TV, we'd be ten times syndicated. If we waited for validation of paycheck or accolades, we'd be starved, already lost, or ran away. But when you're square solid in your circle too, you don't need a place for silence. The concept is conquered through. Media, not areas of people, activity, a mix that don't lose ethnicity, tightness that don't lose elasticity. Explicitly, this isn't where we give the novice regard. Nah, this is where knowledge is born. Last time that I checked, I'm undefeated Ooh. Deliver edicts, can't read this When the gods build and manifest freedom When lines get crossed, they may push a loss Cause they get handed a check We kick the can and cancel Your cancerous gestures A profit vision, precision The prescription for the sickness Is to inoculate your fate With the winning Arrogant beginnings turn to humble endings And you with KBA is a win-win 1K, 1K Uh, police don't need nobody can More pigs need to be in body bags Police don't need nobody can More pigs need to be in body bags Body bags, body bags, body bags Body bags, body bags, body bags Body bags, body bags Blood splashed on the dash cam, video went viral Modern day legend, fear mongering, keep us in this cycle Paradigm must shift, if a if was a grip We would all be rich, but that if more like a fifth Grab our droop, two fanny loose, go out in the blade Then get bland up, hands up, hashtag by my name I bet some don't even sense a threat Just flame slap on the wrist, pat on the back in gutter sisters and brothers late Police don't need no body cams More pigs need to be in body bags Police don't need no body cams More pigs need to be in body bags Still being civil, still holding candlelight vigils Mobile popping pistol, crack a restraint Not even inches, that ain't double standards That ain't privilege though They don't sympathize, it is what it is though Statistics is wicked, I'm convinced They train to kill the black and the innocent You can't tell me different Blue wall of violence, been here, check the data home Same amount of Bodies way before them camera phones. Law enforcement job is carried on draconian imperatives, regardless of personal motives. They say the KKK infiltrated the force. Sad part, some Negro right now calling them folks. Damn. Police don't need no body cams. More pigs need to be in body bags. Police don't need no body cams. More pigs need to be in body bags. 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 Rest in power, Seville Smith. City caught fire. Your star still lit. Fresh off papers, I'm in the field dipping with the steel grip. Like unity is real strip. I cook a pig, but I don't eat the poor. Freedom or death, I'm like either or. Are we following the lead and more? Don't put them in your prayers. Put them underneath the floor. Who wanna be the king? Which one? More in the Rodney. I be midnight riding. Me and Doc Motti. Omani, True and Harry and Shotty. Hell aiming for heads while Jay and Green prepare for the bodies. Body bag. Black Power, be before ODA, it's your brother now is born alive here for a tribute. Won't be long, just wanted to share some of my thoughts on this momentous occasion with the God Day, Jonathan Jackson. Our solid dad brother, the Black God of African Retribution, from my vantage point. On a day like this, just really reflective and really interesting. I know on August the 7th, 1971, and every year in Black August, one of the flea days during the Black August commemoration is August the 7th. So on that flea day, you know, we fast for 
that entire 24-hour period in honor and in solidarity, you know, with the Solidarity Brothers. So we commemorate in that fashion for our brother, Jonathan Jackson, younger brother of George Jackson, the Black Dragon. And we put it all together on that day. Very seldom do I hear any commemoration or any honor or any veneration on this day, you know, on his God day, on the day of his incarnation, very vastly about his exit, but not about his entrance, you know. Similarly, with the entrance of the Honorable Marcus and Zion Garvey, but not on the exit, not on June 10th. So here on June 23rd on Do Knowledge Radio, we stand in commemoration with Jonathan Jackson. And for those who may know me or be familiar with me, they know my relationship to Jonathan Jackson as I have a relationship with my George Jackson, our five-star general, the general of the Khalid Muhammad Militia, General King Samir Shabazz, a wartime salute for him. He is my George and I am his Jonathan, his younger brother. So anything that would befall my older brother, I would respond appropriately in that fashion. And Jonathan loved his older brother. And oftentimes when I begin to speak about their connection, it begins to weigh heavy on me. And Jonathan being the youngest brother of the children was most affected by his brother's absence. His father was killed young. His father, Lester Jackson. So his mother, Georgia Bay Jackson, was left to raise these children alone. And George, being the eldest and one to take care of the family, did some things in his youth that got him sent to prison on numerous occasions. In this last sentence, this one year to life, this death sentence that was given. him going into Soledad prison and not being released. It affected him. It affected him. George going into prison as the criminals would speak to him as if he was the criminal. To see him transform was inspiring to Jonathan. 
on the visits going to see him and to share with him. The relationship between George and Jonathan was one of a vicarious nature, dualistically. Jonathan sought to live through George and George sought to live through Jonathan. This life relationship, this symbiotic relationship, this divine connection between two brothers extended further from brotherhood to a relationship to father and son. And then to a relationship of comrade to comrade. And then to a relationship of political prisoner to freedom fighter. There's other levels that I could get into, but just wanted to paint this picture in regards to this relationship. This was the relationship that was cultivated over the years. This solid dad, this solidarity relationship over the years. that begin from birth all the way until the death. So today on this God day, we look at and search ourselves for our relationships. And in these relationships, do they have this kind of connection? Do they have this connection? When George's parents came to visit him, they used to bring his younger brother, Jonathan. George and Jonathan would get off to one side of the visiting room and whisper together. What went on between them can be seen in this book, in the excerpts from Jonathan's correspondence at the age of 16. Jonathan had an extraordinary insight into the nature of guerrilla warfare. In some of his letters, George later referred to Jonathan as his alter ego. After George was accused of the murder of the guard on the 16th of January, Jonathan began his first taste of African justice, excuse me, of American justice. Jonathan wrote, people have said, I wanted to read this. I love this every time. People have said that I'm obsessed with my brother's case and the movement in general. A person that was close to me once said that my life was too wrapped up in my brother's case and I wasn't cheerful enough for her. It's true. I don't laugh very much anymore. I have one question to all you people and people that think like you, what would you do if it was your brother? This is the question that he asked. This is the question that he asked at the time, but this is the question that he answered with his actions all of his life. He lived his life built around training and preparing himself for the moment that he would see his brother free, 
that he would see his father figure free, that he would see this political prisoner free, that he would see his comrade free. What are you doing right now about your brother? What are you doing right now about your sister? What are you doing right now about your mother? What are you doing right now about your father? And most especially, what are you doing now, right now, about yourself? What are you doing to prepare yourself? to free yourself. What are you doing right now to prepare yourself to free your family, to prepare yourself to free your people, to prepare yourself to free your nation from the claws and the hooves of this beast? of this devil, of this bastard. What are you doing? Are you preparing like Jonathan? Are you preparing like Jonathan? In this visual, this is how far he was willing to go. This is how far that he went for his brother. How far are you willing to go for yourself? Because you ain't going nowhere for your brother. For your sister, for your mother, for your father, for your family, for your people, for your nation. You ain't going nowhere for them. Are you prepared to do this for yourself? And if the answer is no, then you aren't going to do anything for your people. You aren't going to do anything for your family. You're just going to continue to stand by while we're slaughtered. And in your silence, and in your inaction, you're complicit. In your silence, and in your inaction, and in your inability, and in your doubt, and in your fear, and in your ability to disconnect. You are complicit. You are a devil's advocate since y'all like using that shit so fucking much. You are advocating for the devil. The devil is here slaughtering our people on a regular basis and by you doing nothing. You are complicit. You are culpable. You are an accomplice. You're an advocate. George saw Jonathan from his birth into his death. Two lives were destroyed when George went to prison. His and Jonathan's. I can speak about the other family members. I could speak about his mother. I could speak about his other siblings, but I'm speaking about Jonathan. Jonathan transitioned before he could ever see his son. 
Jonathan Jackson Jr., his son. He was a little younger than his father by a couple of years when he learned about who his father was. His father made transition when he was 17. Jonathan Jr. learned about him when he was about 12. Never knew his father. Only reliant on what he heard about his father, what he was told about his father. Only relying about those credible or non-credible sources that spoke to him about his father. the children of the revolution. Fred Hampton Jr. had to hear stories about his father. He never got a chance to meet his father. In like manner. Born in the same month that his father transitioned. Jonathan prepared a way. He studied, he trained, he surveilled. Every part of his being was dedicated to the destruction of our enemies and the freedom, liberation, and salvation of our people localized and mostly represented with his brother. If you don't love you, if you don't love your family, you cannot be of service to our people. Listen to what he's saying. People have said that I'm obsessed with my brother's case and the movement in general. It wasn't solely focused on his brother, even though there was a laser, razor sharp, disciplined lifestyle associated with his brother's liberation. His brother's liberation struggle connected him with the larger movement of the liberation struggle of black people in general. You might look at your family members incarcerated and say that's where they belong. So because you make that agreement, you agree that black people should be hunted down and killed and hunted down and incarcerated. That connection right there. So you don't see this onslaught that's happening to our people on a daily and consistent basis as anything to be perplexed about, to any about anything to be enraged about, anything to formulate a plot, a plan, strategize to eradicate. Don't mention Jonathan's name. Don't mention George's name. If you aren't commemorating today, I don't want to see you in August. I don't want to hear about you in fucking August. If you're not doing this today, if you're not doing this every day, we're doing this every day. Our life is dedicated to this particular discipline. Our life is disciplined and structured around this particular goal every single day. The 
There's not a day. There's not a moment. There's not an instance that we are not looking towards the liberation and salvation of our people and the destruction of our enemies, internal and external. There's not a fucking day that goes by. This is our comrade, our ancestral African retributionary comrade. This is the life that he dedicated and sacrificed. This is where he was. Where are we? from a letter mailed by Jonathan shortly before his death. Why do we go for this old shit? Most of the fascist functionaries live as unguarded as I do. I could slip a knife between Max Rabbity's ribs, the Agnews, the DuPonts, the Rockefellers, the Morgans, and all of the Getty Hunt and Hughes types who would sneak around in armored cars and jets are just as reachable. Was he confused about who his enemy was? If he could get it at 16, 17 years old, how are you 50 and don't guy? How you 20 and don't got it? How aren't you studying your enemy? How aren't you training yourself? How are you in a prepared state for whatever catastrophe may befall you? Whatever comes, are you prepared for it? for whatever comes. Are you prepared for it or are you going to die from it? He died in service, not in servitude. Jonathan Jackson died in service, not in servitude. How will your retributionary story be written? How will your revolutionary story be written? How will your black life be discussed? Will it be discussed in reverence or in mere disgust? He was perplexed, he was like, how do we go for this old shit? What old shit are we still going for in 2022? This is 1970. What old shit are we still going for 52 years later? The same shit we was going for on the plantation. It's the same shit we're still going for on the plantation. Willing supplicants for experimentation. Willing supplicants for eradication. 
willing supplicants for sterilization. Willing supplicants for elimination. Anyone who will come out of the bomb shelter can can be had. Imagine that Nixon's armored car would look would look like if I stepped out of the alley and hit it with an anti-tank rocket launcher under my coat. A ball of fire. Hell would be the reward. In our culture, justice is your penalty or reward depending upon your ways and actions. Here, Jonathan makes the distinguishing factor. Their penalty is their reward. Hell would be their reward. But the gorilla needs our help. When Jonathan steps forward with his anti Nixon rocket launcher, there should be nine more like himself with assault rifles to close an exit path for him. And there should be a political infrastructure, a cadre not far away to explain his actions and glean from the greatest possible overall political effect. I see all of these fucking rifles. I see all of these uniforms and berets and all of this shit and everybody calling me fucking comrade. There ain't no Georges in sight. There ain't no Jonathans in sight. A bunch of fucking costumes and dress up. And no get down. No get back. Overtly or covert. No clandestine operation. No political infrastructure. No cadre. Nothing to glean from the greatest possible overall political effect. We got a chance to build it. We got a chance to make it right. We got a chance to to train, to prepare. We got a chance to get it together. We got a chance to make tomorrow better than today because today we fucked up. We got a chance to win tomorrow. Or we gonna put in the work today to win tomorrow. Or we gonna go and get trained properly to win tomorrow. We're going to go get trained today. Or we're going to go to one of these black survivor die locations and get properly trained today so we can win tomorrow. Or we're just going to dress up. Put on battle dress uniforms. We dress for battle, but we ain't prepared for nothing. We running around here with these rifles and all this other shit. And then as soon as some shit pop off, we looking like fucking Keenan Ivy Wayans and I'm going to get you sucker. He said, I was trained for combat, but I ain't never been in it. Half ain't even trained for combat. And got the audacity to be talking about the streets. They live a combat life. They got cadre. They got a chain of command. 
They just don't know who the real fucking enemy is. They know who a enemy is, not the real enemy. They are hard for it. They're trained for it. You got sissy patches running around. Race traders. Child molesters, rapists in your ranks. The lowest forms of life on the planet. And can't nobody tell the difference between you or them because y'all got on the same fucking uniform. Look at this uniform. Look at this uniform. Let's get trained. Let's get prepared. For what's coming. Let's operate from a vantage point of a tactical advantage. This is how this happened. Reconnaissance, surveillance, strategize and the will to do this is how far you went for his brother how far will you go happy African retributionary God day to the black God of retribution Jonathan Jackson senior Black power, white death, wartime. Yeah. yeah. Now we gonna tell them. That in front. We tell them like this, yo. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. Yeah, y'all like that. No more. <laughs> this man mind is open. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm an African. I'm an African. I'm a, I'm a. African. Let's get and that motive is best developed by recognizing the common enemy.